Okay, so the next step is uh, creating your split screen so you can watch the process. So basically what I'm going to do is I've got a couple tabs open. And so I'm going to create my split screen here so you can watch the video and then you can do the process as you watch the video. So this is the uh, actually going to be the introduction to that. So now I've got my video set up and this will be a link that you will have. And I'm just going to go to Adobe Spark and click enter and then go to the Spark process itself. Click on plus, flyer, so on and so forth. And then I'm going to watch it. Uh, and as it goes, for example, I'm going to go over here and I'll watch it. You know, creating an Adobe Flyer with Jeremy McGuire. This is Mr. McGuire's video. Uh, the very first thing you're going to do with the Adobe Flyer is you're going to go to adobespark.com. Okay, and if you notice, it says uh, spark.adobe.com forward slash SP forward slash. Okay, and so obviously you all know how to get to that. And then from there, we're going to watch the video that I have made. You're going to click on Google. Click on your email address, and then you're going to click on Enterprise ID, okay? Now, again, we're going to go through this as all classes. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is click on the plus sign. If I go a little bit quickly, just bear with me because I will give you the uh, footage of the video. You all also can work with me on that. But right now, I'm doing a uh, Wii video uh, screen recording to kind of help everyone in my classes. Okay, so we're going to hit the plus side and click on flyers, simple enough. And then it's going to uh, start with the, uh, the program. Now, if you notice on the left and on the right, you have options. So what I'm doing is as, as I'm speaking, I'm going to work my way through this process. So you notice how I can pause it. I'll allow you to pause it. Okay, I'm going to finish the uh, demonstration. You can pause it at your, uh, at, at your own individual uh like needs, you know, some people work faster, some people work slower. So what you're going to do with the split split screen is you're going to use a split screen function, okay, to make sure that you all have the option, you know, to work with the flyer program, okay. So you won't need to per se ask <clears throat> every specific detail because the detail is in the demonstration. OK, so basically, if you have a problem with something, what you're going to do and let me just for the sake of this video, I'm going to make this larger. Uh, <clears throat> if you need to ask a question about something, you all you have to do is just how did he how did he do that? I'm going to scroll back. How did he log in? I'm going to scroll to the very beginning. All right. Oh, how did he how did he uh, add the flyer? Then I'm going to do that there. OK, and so let's say you're 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 going to stop for the day. Then I'm going to. You look at the time frame, you know, here it is, 11.45, uh, 05. So that's where I'm going to start the next day you work on it. <clears throat> so there's no excuse, you know, for those students that say, I just don't get it. Uh, this is basically the demonstration you're going to use to start and complete the entire flyer. Now, the due, the due date is on Friday. Uh, and if you notice in the Canvas, on everybody's Canvas page, and I'm going to set this up as well uh, on your Canvas page. When you go to your assignments, <clears throat> here is the Adobe Flyer that I'm going to move to the very top. OK, if you click on the Adobe Flyer JPG, this is pictures for teachers for your Adobe Flyer. OK, so you'll click on that and I will have the pictures of all the teachers that are listed right there for you that you can use. OK, uh, I will continue to put more teachers in. Uh, there's the teachers that you need with their names. These are the pictures that I would like for you to use. If for some reason there's not a picture in there, then I can put a picture in there. If you have a concern or you need to know how to submit the Adobe Flyer, you could click on that link and that shows you how you submit. Okay, it's very, very simple, you know, and I'm going to walk you through it right now just to make sure you understand. You click on the Adobe Flyer JPG. Remember, we got to save it as a JPG file, okay? So that being said, you're gonna click on that, then you're gonna click on JPG. You can connect it to your Google Drive or you can choose, a, choose the file when you download it, whatever the case may be, okay? Last but not least, 
when you're done, you're going to download it as a JPG. Start download. Okay, so in my case, uh, it's going to my downloads. In your case, it's going to recents, depending on what type of computer you're using. So that being said, this is the final part of the project. I'm going to review one more time. When you go back to the canvas, this is your canvas. You click on assignments, and there it is, Adobe Flyer JPG. That is the whole assignment, okay? Uh, I can't really stress enough that you need to use these demonstration videos. This demonstration video will have what you're going to, going to watch right now. This is Mr. McGuire, and hopefully we will be able to get this project done by Friday the 12th. This is Mr. McGuire's video. Uh, the very first thing you're going to do with the Adobe Flyer is you're going to go to adobespark.com. Okay, and if you notice, it says uh, spark.adobe.com forward slash SP forward slash. Okay, and so obviously you all know how to get to that. And then from there, we're going to watch the video that I have made. You're going to click on Google, click on your email address, and then you're going to click on Enterprise ID. Okay. Now, again, we're going to go through this as all classes. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is click on the plus sign. If I go a little bit quickly, just bear with me because I will give you the uh, footage of the video. You all also can work with me on that. But right now I'm doing a uh, Wii video uh, screen recording to kind of help everyone in my classes. Okay, so we're going to hit the plus sign and click on flyer. Simple enough. And then it's going to... Uh, start with the uh, the program. Now, if you notice on the left and on the right, you have options that you can use. On the right, you can use the, uh, it says uh, good dog new is the font at 132.5. And we're going to go through all those different things. Now, it says you will be developing a flyer for a teacher. Okay. You will be developing a flyer for a teacher. So you're going to choose a teacher from your grade level or an exploratory teacher. All right, so that means you'll choose an eighth grader for this class. Uh, for fourth period, you'll also choose an eighth grader or an exploratory teacher. For third and sixth, you'll choose a seventh grader teacher or exploratory teacher. And then fifth period, you're going to choose a sixth grade teacher or an exploratory teacher. Now, what I need you to do is this. I, before we begin to choose anyone, you all need to choose and we're going to work on that as a collaborative effort because some some students are going to want to do the same teacher. So in your mind, you're going to think about who you're going to choose. So right now we're just watching the video, watching the demonstration, and then I'm going to review that tomorrow on the next day. OK, so let's go through this again. I'm using uh, the flyer to actually teach it. OK, now then you're going to develop an idea on how. Um, you will develop this idea and how you can create interest for that classroom. Okay. And I'm going to use my classroom as an example. Okay. And there's going to be a lot of really cool things. I'm going to provide the picture unless you want to take it. Okay. The flyer could be posted outside of the classroom. So when we go back, this potentially could be something that that teacher uses uh, to put outside of their classroom. So let me expand this just a little bit so you can see a little bit better in the footage. There we go. Um, you could, you're going to name yourself as the designer on the lower right. So if you created a logo, which we have, then you're going to do that on the lower right. All right. So the next process, let me let that run for a minute. After you have completed the flyer, Here's some ideas that will help you get started. Again, I'm using uh, the Adobe Spark Flyer. Uh, the first thing, you're going to open your account. Obviously, we've done that. Step two, you're going to click on the blue plus sign uh, and choose the Flyer option. We've done that as well. So you can like actually teach uh, or work with other colleagues or students, or if you're a teacher, uh, to, to teach things using this as well. Not, probably not the best method, but since we're using the Flyer technique, I figured that. I would use this. Okay, so the, the next process. Okay, uh, so let's move on and I'm going to walk through this. I'm going to let it run and I'm going to talk you all through it. So again, I'm going to review this. You hit the plus sign. You're clicking on the flyer. It opens up. 
And then here we are. This is the templates on the left uh, to create a flyer. And then you have different things. So you look on the right for options that you can use to develop a design. So in this case, you have animations, you have backgrounds, you can resize it. And the one thing that I want you to do is I want you to res and you have the designs, but we're going to go to resize and everybody remember, we're going to resize it as eight and a half by 11. And the reason we're going to resize it is that is because when you print it out on um, a regular sheet of paper, it's a eight and a half by 11. So the copy machine usually prints out eight and a half by 11. That's something we have access to. Now, what I want you all to do is be aware you can use any type of color scheme you want. OK, uh, when the schools open back up, I'll go to the teacher resource center and we'll print these babies out in full color. So if you use a thousand different colors and it looks good and the contrasts are good and it, it, it's legible where people can read it as they walk by the classroom, that's what we're looking for. OK. All right. So let's move on. Uh, so we've got a little so we've re, we're going to resize that again as a. Uh, eight and a half by 11, you click on letter and then there it goes and it saves the project again. Now, remember at the top left where it says projects, my post, that's where you're going to name it. That's where you're going to name it. Okay. All right. So we're going to press play again and we're going to move on to this process. All right. So the, to change, you can change uh, your design. I've chosen design. I've changed the design. Uh, when you click on the font, you can change uh, the spelling, or you can change what you're writing, as you see here. Uh, when I say change variations, the variations, which means the color scheme and so on and so forth. Now, one, one quick point. If you notice, if you misspell something, like, for example, I'm going to show you something here. It says W-E-L, period. Well, that's the word I'm spelling as well. But if you notice, there's a line underneath it. So be aware of those things, okay? So Adobe also will help you spell check. So you can change the font, change the size, the letter size. You can change the variations. And if you look over on the right, you can see some of those options. OK, so uh, again, we've already done the resize. Uh, we're looking at the background now and some different things like that. Uh, so let's look at and see what Mr. McGuire is going to come up with with his design. OK, so as you see, I, I'm clicking on the arrows and changing the variations and just trying to get it to where I really like it. OK, now, again, you are not going to have all this typed out on yours. Yours is going to be a little bit different. What we're doing right now is we're exploring Adobe Spark Flyer technique. Right there is a the background with shadows. That's more of a transparent uh, font. Uh, you, you can do some crazy. You just need to do stuff that, that is recognizable. You know, whatever jumps out to you, jumps out to you. So decide on which design variation that you want your flyer to look like. You can use any type of color scheme you choose. Totally up to you. This is, I'm giving you total autonomy to create this. The word autonomy means basically I give you the power to do what you want to do. Okay. I'm giving you the technique and you take it from there. Kind of like we did with the Adobe video, like we did with the Adobe logo. So how all these things work together now we're working together. We're working from step by step by step. How does that connect to other classes? Well, when you're in a math class, two plus two is four. And then you have to learn, you, you learn your addition and subtraction tables. And then you learn your multiplication tables and your and division. And then from there, you go from long division to order of operations. And you have to know all these things to kind of build on your design process. Okay, so this class is the exact same thing. The cool thing is, is that if you see something you really like, you want to do, it's perfect. All right, so let's move on. I'll go to the right if you want to create an outline. Now, this is very important. As you see, when you click on the color scheme, if you see that, you have where it says custom, and it has the hashtag with a bunch of Fs beside it. Okay, notice that because this is something we're going to use. If you notice, if I'm using that blue right there, if I want to use that blue again, that color scheme it's a number sign or hashtag, whichever you, you call it. It's 1947E6. If I wanted to use that exact color blue, then you would copy and paste that. So the next time you choose a color and you want to match that color, that is what you would do. Okay. 
if you want to move it over, whatever the case may be, whatever that whatever it is, you can change your font or your background to whatever color you want. Okay, so again, we're still working on our variations. I'm going to let it run and I'm going to talk through it. So now what we're working on is creating a background and I wanted a little bit of a border. Okay, you can make your border thicker. You can make it smaller. Now, when you do your background, that's that's I mean, I wanted a border. That's how I want it. Now, you notice on the bottom right, I have my brand, my logo, that one of my logos that I created. Jeremy McGuire has my name inside of the J, the name inside of the M. Worked really hard on it, you know, and so the fact that you work hard on your logo, that's what you need to use. You need to use your logo. So when we print it out, say, for example, if you put it out in front of Mr. Jones's office and you do Mr. Jones, you know, with, with right now we're going to do the core classrooms and or the exploratory teachers then there'll be some things that will represent him, okay? So here we go. We're working on this right now. I'm going to let it run for a minute. Now, right here under the decorative, it's giving you some different color options. And that's the cool thing about this. It gives you color options that are worked together that are complementary. OK, complementary, which means they're beside each other on the color wheel uh, or across from each other on the color wheel. Uh, you know, analogous colors are beside each other. Uh, a monochromatic is like black, white and gray. But if you want to add some colors, complementary colors are like, well, we, you know, the Super Bowl was most most recent. You know, if you think about yellow and green going together, OK, uh, because they're cross, yellow and blue make green, but, if, you know, if they're across from each other on the color wheel, you know, red, yellow, and blue are your complementary colors, and they're across from each other on the color wheel. So if you use, you know, yellow and blue, you know, that's Henry Clay's colors, right? So they're across from each other on the color wheel. You use green and yellow or green and gold or green and orange, you know, they're across from each other on the color wheel, not directly across, but close enough. So that's what these color schemes are. So they actually have some really cool schemes that work. So I'm going to, I'm personally going to use a, a Crawford color. So right here, if you notice, I'm going to choose my palette. This is our current palette. You know, I'm kind of messing around right here, just playing around just to kind of see what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my, my color scheme there and, and kind of show you guys what I'm going to use. So I, my background border is going to be a darker green. Now, here's the thing. Remember what I said? Let me go back real quick. When I choose that darker green, okay, and so if that's the green right there, I want to use, let me go right, uh, let me pause it real quick right there, okay, hashtag 42483A. So if you copy and paste that little number beside the green circle, Okay, then you can maintain that green all the way throughout the project, which is really a, a cool uh, part of your uh, schematics for your color scheme. So this is this is huge in digital art. You'll use this in graphic design. You'll use this in videography, so on and so forth. Right here, I'm just clicking on find a new style. It automatically kind of gives you new styles that are built in that graphic designers that have worked for Adobe made work so i personally want to center that so i'm clicking a style until i find something i like now if you want you can go up here and add your own text okay and create your own style so now what we're doing is putting the name of the teacher on the top of your flyer okay put the name of the teacher on the top of your flyer all right that being said here we go it says mr mcguire so i'm like i said i'm doing my own now, one thing I want you to notice is when I move that, that dotted line right there will help you center your text, okay? And the cool thing about that is if I wanted to continue text all the way down vertically on my piece, that will help me center it, okay? So let's move on. Now, today I'm doing a whole lot of talking. Tomorrow, I'm going to kind of break it down. So don't stress it. Don't stress out about it. Uh, again, I'm going to go back in, and I just want to show you how you add your text again. So you go over to the text. On the left side, you got text, photos, icons, design assists, uh, backgrounds, your brands. If you want to add text, go to the left and add text, okay? 
All right, so I'm putting Mr. McGuire. Uh, you can move it up and down. Now, here's the cool thing is right here. Uh, if you notice on the right, uh, you can make your you can make your uh, your text more transparent. So right there on the right, it's 89%. I'm just kind of moving that, scrolling up and down. You can add sh uh, shadow uh, block, which actually puts a color behind your text. Uh, you can make it uh, an outline. You can do all kinds of cool things. So like the shape of your shadow uh, and the transparency of your shadow, all those things are all built in to creating a flyer in Adobe Spark. Now, again, you make sure that you understand, like you can use all these things, but sometimes it's good to kind of stick with just a few. Don't use them all. Like don't use shadow, outline, and block, and all. I mean, sometimes if you get a little crazy with it, you know, so right here, I'm going to use an outline. And I and I created an outline where I wanted I wanted a two-tone color, okay? Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to kind of see the background through my name, but also wanted another color. And that being said, once I found that blue that I really liked, because I thought blue went really well with green, okay, then I'm going to continue to use it. Now, the next thing, I'm going to put a picture of myself in there, okay? So now I've got my border. <clears throat> I've added my brand, my logo, right? Now I'm going to connect it to Google Drive. So any picture that you use, if you do a screenshot, do anything you want, put it in a spot in your Google Drive, and it's all connected. So that's the homework you have to do. So you first, you decide on what teacher you want to work with. Second, you're going to decide on where you want to put it in your drive. And thirdly, you're going to connect your Google Drive, just like we did before in your Google video. Okay. You're going to allow it, click on it, and you are good to go. Okay. You allow it, click on it, you are good to go. You know, one thing I like about Adobe, it says, sell a good night's sleep, not a mattress. How can you connect your product? or service to a universal emotion. The thing about our Google video, it took five to seven imprints, impressions to create what people remember. Nike, 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 Nike. You hear that a million times. When they first started, you have to develop an idea. So if you're going to sell something and you're going to use a flyer, you know, you can use a flyer to promote something like a dance or you can use a flyer to say, I'm going to sell something, or if you all want a service, okay? You're not selling a mattress, you're selling the good night's sleep. So tempur sells the good night's sleep. And that's why when you sell mattresses, you're selling a good night's sleep, which means I'm going to give you a year to decide if you like that mattress. You know, some companies do that, and they do that because they feel so strongly about the product. That's no different and than what we're teaching in this class. Your branding with Adobe. And then by the end of the class, you're going to say, I can add text to an Adobe Spark flyer. I can add pictures to Adobe Spark flyer. Okay. So let's move on. All right. So you're now you're going to add your teacher's name as you just watched, just like I did my name. Okay. Then you're going to click on the photos link Click your Google Drive to Adobe Spark. Now, again, I'm using Adobe Flyer to teach this process, okay? And I think it's going to be really cool. I think you're going to really like it. Again, don't stress. You can also use Google Photos if you have Dropbox. What Lightroom is is more what we showed you before when classes first start. And then there's also some free photos. But right now, you want to use the teacher's photo. And again, I have the teacher's photos for you. I have the teacher's photos that I will put them in a folder and share them with you as we continue this project. All right, so let me press play. Now I'm connecting this to, and I'm going to type my name in to see if I can find um, my photo for this project. Now, what I've done is, and I want to show you where I didn't do as much research and I didn't do as much homework like I told you all to do. That was the only picture right there with the green screen, so I used that. But you know what? In a project, you you want to use a really good picture. And that was probably not the best picture to use. OK, and that's why I went and made a folder with all the pictures that look the same. OK, because I really want the teachers to want to use these flyers outside their classroom. You know, this is this is a self-promoting for you and your design skills. But it's also 
Every time a kid looks at the flyer, let's say Miss Elliott's class or Miss Damon's class or Miss Bain's class or uh, Mrs. Simpson's class, whoever's class they look at, they look at the bottom right and they see that logo. I'm like, oh, so and so created that. That's pretty cool. How? And they might ask you how to do that. Okay. So there, there's some really cool ideas out there. And obviously, I'm showing you this just to kind of give you an idea. You, When you have the boxes or the little circles, you can resize it. So what I've done is I went in there and I added my picture. Um, and this is what I'm going to do with it. So that's the picture that I'm, I'm going to add. Now, this is the technique that I'm going to use. Now, you all can use this technique. You all don't have to use this technique. I kind of played around with some ideas. I, I thought Mr. McGuire... The, the text was a little bit too big, so I wanted to make it smaller. But I'm showing you all some options that you can use uh, to make things bigger or smaller. Uh, you can you can make the box bigger, or smaller. But what I've done here, I'll show you as I make that smaller, it, you know, it makes it better for me to put more design processes in the piece, if that makes sense. So, you know, Mr. McGuire, the word doesn't need to be the complete focal point of the piece but it obviously needs to be big enough for people to be able to see it. You know, for sixth graders, as they come to the building, you know, this would be a really great way for them to find a class. Okay, now all the teachers have names out in front of their class, but this is going to be more detailed, if you will. Okay, so uh, again, I'm just messing around with it. You're going to insert the picture of the teacher as we've just discussed how to connect your Google Drive, you know, and then, you know, I'm going back and forth just showing you guys how to use this process. OK, we got a few minutes left, but I'm going to continue this process again. This is a, ver a, a fairly long demonstration, but I wanted you all to be totally aware of how to do this process. OK, now one 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 quick point. As you add, there is a beta right here, which means there's something they're trying as Adobe, as an Adobe company. I've got that blue background on mine, you know, and I wanted to take it out. We talked about using remove BG. Remove.bg pulls the background up off of a picture, whether it be a JPEG or PNG file, right? Well, if you click on remove the background, because remember, I've got that selected. I'm going to click on remove the background. What it does, it removes that blue background and it just gives the picture. So you're going to click on the picture and remove the background. I would like everyone to do that process. Okay, click on the picture. On the right, you'll see where it says remove background. Now, from here, I'm going to extend this and make it quite a bit larger. Okay. I'm going to add that to background. So, see how I did that real quick. I want to show you real quick. Right here where it says under restore background or remove background, I'm going to click on add the background. So, that's going to be in my actual background of my picture. Okay. Now, the cool thing about that is I remove that. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. Now, that picture is slightly pixelated. So really when I print it out, and I don't know how good it's going to look, but let me show you one thing that I'm doing with it. I, I put like Mr. McGuire is uh, transparent where you can still kind of see through that. If you, if you will. And then the background, I'm going to make my picture a little bit more transparent as well. But if you look at what I'm doing, you know, uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom part here in a minute. I'm going to add some filters. Now, here's the cool part about it. It creates filters where if you want to go black and white, what the filters will do is it will limit how pixelated this picture is. Now, what pixelation is, is when you take a picture and it's, and it's intended to be smaller, but then you blow it up, the larger you make that picture, the more out of focus and the less quality that picture is going to be. OK, and that's the, the form of pixelation. OK, so that being said, I'm going to kind of mess around. You got colorize, multiply, matte, lighten, grayscale, dark and contrast. And then you can do some enhancements to it. OK, so there's all kinds of things. See, I'm doing enhancements to it. I made it a little bit darker because I wanted to create certain enhancements to the picture to make sure that it's not completely pixelated. If that makes sense. It doesn't have to be like. A perfect picture it just has to be the image of that teacher if that makes sense okay but it doesn't need to be so out of focus where you can't recognize that teacher so i mess with shadow warmth sharpen saturation brightness so on and so forth 
Now, real quick point, over here on the right, these numbers do mean something. So saturation is negative 26, highlights 16, shadows 5, warmth is 10, sharp is 18. So let's say you want to do multiple ones of these, and someone says, hey, I want you to, I'm going to pay you $10 to do me a flyer. And you want to match that, you'll need to write these numbers down. So once you get it down to a science like that, you put these numbers in, and you're off to the races. Things are good. All right, so let's look at it. So you can do a blur if you want to. You can do a color correction, you know. And so right here, I mean, I kind of like that. I liked having that white background uh, around me, and I kind of made myself a little bit more lightened, if you will, because I didn't want – I want the picture to be seen, but I don't want it to be like the main focal point. So what I've done, I changed the font. And I made the box a little bit wider so I could use this more, this space a little bit better. Okay. So now that we've got that part, uh, we're going to move uh, some different things around, uh, probably changing some sizes of some fonts and things like that, just to kind of see what it'll look like when I make my font just a little bit larger. Okay. All right. So that is going to be the first part of the uh, demonstration. Okay, so this is the next step here that I'm working with uh, on our uh, process here. If you notice what we're doing with uh, the uh, font, we're changing the opacity. And if you want to look here at the at the process of uh, the uh, making the font transparent, making the font and the in, in this case right here, if you notice where we're clicking on the logo. And by clicking on the logo, let's back it up a little bit. I'm clicking on the logo. Um, and with that being said, when you choose the logo like I've done just there, and then on the right, you're going to click the what's called the layer order. And then you're going to make sure that the logo is brought to front. That will be helpful to you to do some things uh, with your logo to make sure. All right, now, when you add your logo, make sure you bring it to the front, as you just saw. There's, again, you go to the layer order, and I'm just showing you the, the back and forth process of how this, this works, okay? Uh, on the left, you see the logos that you can add. On the right is just uh, replacing the logo, if you will. And so in my case, I just use my JM. You can use your name where I put McGuire Media. You can use your name, however you want to do it. Whatever the case is, you need to make sure that you use something that represents you as the graphic designer. Okay. So as I move on, we I'm duplicating this text because I'm going to add something else to it, as in I'm going to change it to graphic arts. Uh, to uh, or graphic design, what, whatever the class is, if it's social studies. I, and I've done this because I want to maintain the, the font the exact same way. This also creates a duplication where you don't have to redo the whole style. Okay, so I like the opacity of it. Uh, I like the background right here. I'm showing where you can add, you know, more of a background to identify what the wording is and what the font says. But in this case, you know, I'm just looking at some different things, uh, making it darker, showing you where you can make it lighter, a lot of different ways uh, through this process. Again, when you're doing this, you know, just keep in mind of the overall composition of the piece. Keep in mind that like when you're working on your processes through your design, that you can see the face behind you if you decide to go with this method, but you also can read the text. And that's very, very important. Okay, so the next process is I'm going to icons. You know, if you look at the icons, there's a lot of things you can do. So in my class, it's a graphic arts class. So what you're going to do is you're going to identify what that teacher teaches. And by doing that, when identifying what the teacher teaches, uh, you're going to show uh, some identifiable factors, if you will. So, for example, I'm going to add a computer screen. And I did it twice, so I've got to delete one. And so one, once I choose that, then I'm going to move it around and create a, a lighter tone that you can also see through the computer screen and then resize it. Why do I have a computer screen? Because we do graphic design. You know, so 
you're going to do some identifiable uh, icons that that show what the teacher teaches. We also do photography. So I'm going to choose, and these are free stock clip art pictures that you can use. Now, pay pay close attention to this process. When you see this, it, you notice the dotted lines as you move. Uh, I want to make sure that the, the size of our piece, are the pieces are the same. Now, if you look at this, I'm looking at the color option. OK, because I want the colors of all of these icons to be the exact same. So here's what you do. I've got the computer here highlighted. OK, I'm going to click on that. And if you notice right there where it says hashtag BFDA07. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. I'm going to choose that and copy that. Right. Control C or if you're using a Mac, Command C. I'm going to copy that. And then so when I go to my. I go to the, the uh, color style of the photography icon or the clip art, if you will. I'm going to go on there and paste the exact same thing. What that does is that maintains the exact same unification of color for my different icons. See how that works. So I'm going to do that for the next part, which is videography. And by doing that, it, again, it gives me some icons that I can use. You just choose the one you like that fits best. Uh, so. What I personally wanted to do is I wanted to, and I'm going to the same process. I'm, you know, I've already paid, copied it. So I'm just going to paste, you know, copy and paste the exact same. I'm going through it again. I'm hashtag BFD0A7 to maintain the exact same color schematics for that icon. Okay. And I like that icon just because it's more of a see through. It's the same kind of pattern that I'm using. So, uh, what I'm doing is you make sure you choose, you have it chosen with the circles and then you can hit the arrow button and or the uh, shift and arrow to make it move a little faster. OK, so there's a lot of things that can be done with this process. You know, I'm working through uh, some different things here. So now what we what we see here is you see where it says Mr. McGuire. It says graphic arts. I've got some icons there that identify what I teach in class. So when a student walks into my class. Uh, then you can kind of get an idea. Uh, I, I'm changing a few things, making a few uh, optional changes with, with the uh, design structure from shape to shadow. You know, there's opacity. There's all kinds of things. So when you choose, when you select your text, it'll give you some options to make changes. Now, the next thing is I'm going to add a few other uh, options to the process. Um, and you can go to you add your own text or it also has some different types of text there. So this is basically the end of the process. If you notice there, that is how we are going to complete the Adobe Flyer. And if you notice, there's really nothing else that I'm going to show you with that. Uh, give me one second here. Okay, so just want to show you a few things. Obviously, I wanted to add a few more things here. And basically, I just basically worked, worked on some different fonts. I choose uh, that font there with that size. Uh, so basically, for me, you know, I went digital art, videography, and uh, photography. Now, what I'm going to do, you can move these around and do some different things. Obviously, photography goes right there. Uh, digital art probably would go right there. So what I need to do... Uh, is I need to move that up. I'm going to move videography over the video camera so it kind of makes more sense. Uh, and again, if you just use your arrows, it really helps to kind of nudge that. And then um, and then I'm going to place the digital art and the photographer where they belong. Now, the good thing about this is once you decide on how you want it to be, then you can just duplicate that. For example, let's say I did for videography first. And by doing that, you know, I go in there and go just go into add text, you know. And so if I wanted to go videography, I just add the text like like so. And then by adding that, you know, it just adds a certain text. You can go over here and change the text. You can change the size of the text. You can change the color of the text. You know, there's all kinds of ways that you can make it pop. There's all kinds of ways, like if you wanted it darker and shown up more, if you wanted it more transparent. You know, in my opinion, 
I like it a little bit transparent where you can kind of still see through the text. Now, once you get done with that text, just as a real he quick heads up, you can come over here and duplicate that text. And that's how I did photography and digital art. So you decide on what you want first and then just duplicate it. And that's what I've done here. Because of the border, I wanted it to match. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image itself. Uh, I'm going to look at, you know, make before I finish, I'm going to change uh, anything that I need to change. Let's see what I'm going to do. Let's, maybe I'll make that a little bit larger or you can see my face a little bit more. You know, uh, and that cuts down on the border and also gives me some more space for my icons. You know, so before you finish, you know, I'm going to nudge that to the right a little bit where my border is equal primarily around the edges. And then I'm going to move my icons down a little bit. And yes, it's a little bit pixelated, but I'm not really worried about that per se. I'm going to move it down so it, it, it kind of gives it a little bit better spacing. And I'm just using my arrow right now just to nudge. If you just press your arrow to nudge, and then that will give me some space to push these fonts and our phrases down and kind of organize them like I want. Okay. So that kind of gives you some ideas there on the processes of how you can complete your Adobe Flyer. So what I'm going to do, this is your instructional tool to help you with that. Okay. So that's, that's the process of how we're going to do that. Uh, the next thing uh, is, is going to be showing you how to do a split screen so you can watch this video and do it.